What's up guys, Vital Syntax here, and there's a bunch of new information that just came out recently about the standalone version of DayZ. There was a recent post by Rocket on the DayZ developer uh, Tumblr, I'll put a link in the description to the post if you guys want to read the entire thing, but I'm going to be going over that post in detail and try and give you guys a summary of what he talked about in a categorized manner. So the first thing I want to talk about is the graphics. There's been a lot of improvements as far as the graphics go from Arma 2 to the standalone version of DayZ. And I'm going to be showing you guys some gameplay from the DayZ mod that I just recorded, as well as some brand new screenshots that were just released. So keep in mind that the gameplay you're saying is not standalone gameplay. We don't have any video of the standalone quite yet, but these are some new screenshots that were just uh, that were just published. So. There, there's a lot of new lighting effects they've added. It makes the, the environments and the game just look way better, uh, especially out in the wilderness. It just it looks way less dull and flat, uh, as you kind of saw with Arma 2. Um, so I'm really excited for uh, the new graphical improvements. On top of that, they've also uh, updated a lot of the textures, made them higher resolution, made it look more post-apocalyptic, as well as some of the materials, both interior areas, buildings, and the environment. Uh, and vegetation and things like that. They've also added a new volumetric cloud system and essentially in a lot of ways they've kind of developed a new engine. I mean yes it's still based off of Arma 2 but Arma 3 is also just based off of Arma 2. At what point do you go from uh, just updating an engine to a new version of an engine or a new iteration? Yeah I know they're not rewriting an engine from the ground up. Very few people ever do that. Um, but whenever you kind of, you know, make huge changes to the graphics and also make huge changes to the back end, which they're also doing, in some ways I think that they're kind of designing a brand new engine. Um, maybe not brand new, but a new engine in some senses. I mean, you look at something like Call of Duty, they, they, they claim that they have a new version of the Infinity Ward engine every couple of years, but it's, you know, essentially the same thing. So it's kind of, kind of hard to say, you know, I guess it's impossible to say this is a brand new engine unless you completely rewrite it from the ground up. So in my eyes, with these new graphical updates that they're showing off, as well as all the back-end stuff that they've done with the uh, the servers, the items, this inventory system, in my eyes, this is a new engine um, that's way better than the one that uh, Armor 2 ran off of. Next, I want to talk about some of the improvements they've made to the map, Chernaris Plus. They've added a bunch of new areas and buildings. Um, new objects like vehicle wrecks and bases uh, and they've also redesigned a bunch of the buildings that were already on the map uh, in, in, in Arma 2 and also obviously making basically all the buildings enterable. I'm not sure if they've confirmed all of the buildings but the vast majority of the buildings are going to be enterable and have interior areas that you can be able to find loot uh, and things like that. So like I said earlier there's some major updates to the server architecture and how the client is going to communicate with the server. Um, they're making it into an MMO-like function where all of, or not all of, but most of the um, computing is done on the server. A lot of the behavior and updating things uh, like player location, the items in your gear, um, you know, what health you have, your humanity, things like that are going to be stored as well as updated on the server instead of the client. That way, you know, scripts and cheats and hacks won't be able to teleport players or won't be able to spawn items or vehicles or just kill people, things like that. So they're trying to prevent a lot of the hacking that we saw with the uh, DayZ mod by implementing a uh, server architecture that's very similar to something you'd see like in a massive multiplayer online game, which are kind of designed with, uh, you know, multiplayer uh, gameplay in mind. Another thing that they've talked about implementing, but I'm not sure if it's you know actually going to make it into the standalone because it has a lot of issues that come up with it, is the way that loot and zombies spawn in the world. In the Daisy mod, if you get close enough to you know a building that's going to spawn items, it'll spawn items, and if you get close enough to a building that has you know a zombie spawn, the zombies will spawn. And the issue with that is you can tell by, uh, by standing at, you know at a distance that's farther than the point where you'd spawn items and zombies. Uh, if another player is around because if you see zombies and you weren't close enough to spawn them Then you know there's another player and that kind of ruins some of the player versus player uh, Interactions that you might have if you just you know automatically know where players are You know if they've been through a city or things like that So they're talking about the possibility of spawning loot and zombies uh, On every server restart which I think would be amazing. I think that would fix a lot of issues with uh, the thing that you know I was talking about earlier, but at the same time, that, that, that caused a lot of issues because 
Um, the, one of the reasons they did it the way they did in the Daisy mod is that way you don't have you know a hundred thousand zombies spawn at once. You only spawn the zombies that you know are going to be near players and that players are going to interact with. So I don't know. Maybe maybe that's going to be implemented the way they've talked about, or maybe they can implement it in a way. Uh, that zombies spawn within you know a thousand meters instead of you know the 200 or 300 or 400 that they spawn at now that way by the time you get uh, within viewing range of it uh, the zombies will have already been spawned something like that but uh, any type of improvements to the zombies and loot spawns is, uh, is a welcome change one of the big complaints that a lot of people have about uh, daisy mod is the server browser because you have to use arma 2's server browser which goes through game spy which is just a nightmare it doesn't filter properly sometimes servers don't even show up sometimes they'll show up for a second and then they'll disappear before you can click on them which is really frustrating so a lot of people will use things like the six launcher or six updater or daisy commander which is very popular and quite awesome by the way but they're implementing a new server browser, an in-game server browser that's going to be much better. It's not going to use GameSpy. It's going to use uh, the Steam servers, I believe, or the Steam uh, system that, that Valve's implemented for finding and joining servers and stuff like that. So it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Um, and it's definitely going to be a lot better than what we have with the Daisy mod. There's also a bunch of new improvements to the inventory and item systems. Uh, they've added durability of items and other uh, features. Um, so you might you might use a weapon over time and have to repair it or do maintenance or things like that, um, which is definitely a really, really cool change. And there's also going to be a bunch of character customization, things like being able to choose your gender, which you can do on some servers in the Daisy mod, but also be able to choose your race. Uh, whenever you make a new character. Now, this is also something that you can do in Arma 2 if you go into the profile settings uh, before you join a server. Uh, but also having the option to maybe do like tattoos, have uh, you find new unique clothing around the world. Um, and they've also implemented a way overhaul for the, the clothing system. There's going to be a lot more options, things like hats and probably changing out shoes and pants and shirts, basically the whole, the whole uh, deck of cards, as well as being able to uh, th those clothings can carry disease so if you have some type of disease you take your clothes off and somebody puts them on they might get that disease too which is really interesting let's we'll see how that plays out along with um, clothing there's also new weapon attachments so you'll be able to you know swap out a red dot and put it on one weapon or put it onto another one um, this is also going to change how ammo and magazines are going to work hopefully you'll be able to refill magazines or like uh, you know redistribute ammo over over magazines things like that so the last thing I want to talk about, and this is probably the thing that people want to know most, is when is it coming out? Well, they don't have a set release date still. Hopefully that's going to come soon. But they already are doing internal tests of the game. So that means that it's not available to anybody outside of the studio, but they are testing it in-house. Now they're going to do a public closed test uh, very soon. I would guess you know within the next couple weeks. And that means that they're going to invite you know a couple of thousand players to uh, come and test out the game they're not going to have it open to the public um, so you, you can't just join it if you want to join it you probably have to be invited in some in some way and after they you know they've tried out the the, the private type of testing then they're probably going to do an open test um, later on a little bit after that so unfortunately i know everybody wants to know when is it coming out there's no release date yet which i actually would rather them not have a release date and then um, you know, scramble if it's getting too tight during the towards the release date. I would much rather them, you know, take their time and release it when it's actually done instead of uh, before it's you know ready for people to start playing on. So, anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to give me a like or a favorite, and I'll see you guys in the next video.